is told of a group of teenagers who approached a drive through window and said, Hi, I'd like to make an order. To which the cashier quickly replied, Hi, I'm sorry, but unfortunately I can't serve you here unless you're in a car. Obviously. You're welcome to come inside though. To which they responded, What are you talking about? We're in a car, see? I'm the driver, he said while calling his imaginary steering wheel. And these are my passengers, he said while pointing to his three friends, who, by the way, all also wanted to order food. The cashier responds, say, Sorry, but unless you can crash your car and dent my wall, I can't serve you here. And being creative and committed to their cause as they were, he said, Okay made a screeching noise and crashed his body into the wall. Just like this clever guy, God expects us to be as firmly committed to his cause. So, let us consider commitment. What does commitment mean to you? Does it mean making a decision and seeing it through regardless of the challenges you will face? Does it mean giving up halfway because of the stumbling blocks that were present? Does commitment mean accountability? Do you commit for the sake of popularity? Do you commit merely out of expectation? What does commitment to God mean to you? Think about the questions I just asked. Do they reflect the nature of your relationship with God? The foundation of commitment is choice. Our God is a God of choices, and he would never force any of us to commit to him because through his, our decision, he wants genuine hearts of service. So keep this point of reflection at the forefront of your mind. What does commitment to God mean to me? I want this to be the point of reflection because the truth is it is the basis on which our entire being is as Christians. My commitment points to who I serve and who I am. I believe that the word commit, the action or want of commitment, has within recent generations been used and exercised quite frivolously. Sisters and brothers, young people, it is important that we know that commitment is the close companion of choice and not of feelings. It is a mentality, a daily decision, which communicates that regardless of the circumstances, the thorns in our flesh and the noise around us, we will. But what seems to be trending now is for commitment to be anything based solely on our emotions. Fortunately for us, we have the greatest example of commitment, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But what if Jesus' commitment to us and to Calvary's cross was based on his feelings? What if on that day, he said something like this? Why should I die for these selfish people? I don't even know them. Why should I take responsibility for the sins of those who aren't even born yet? Father, this is so embarrassing and unfair. What if? Knowing Judas would betray him, he would have cut him off. Or knowing Peter would deny him, he would have cussed him off and called them both fake friends. What if in that difficult moment, he chose to look to the left or the right instead of keeping his focus on being about his father's business? and on choosing to break his commitment to us and to his father. How would the church have been born? Where would the word have progressed? Where would you and I be? How we feel is never an excuse for breaking or halting our commitment to Christ. I say this because Jesus also felt I have internalized and come to grips with the idea that one of the reasons Jesus came was so we could never say, nobody understands how I feel. He was betrayed, lied on, cursed, embarrassed. He grieved, 
he was disowned, taken advantage of, along with so many other things. He, if nobody else understands, that life is a trial, but he wants us to stand under the weight of our commitment all the time, and not only when it's convenient to us. I'll ask you this. Does your commitment to Christ reflect the actions of Jesus when life isn't going your way or the unexpected happens? Maybe your plans didn't work out. Do you then lose sight of what your commitment means to you? And does it waver if, just for example, you didn't get into the school you preferred, you didn't have all the friends you wanted, you lost your job, or you didn't get the job you wanted where you wanted it, and you didn't move out when you wanted to, you didn't get married at 25 to the man or woman of your dreams, or have children at 28. Maybe your house wasn't built as quickly as you wanted it to be, and God didn't do what we humbly advised him to do. So, as a result of this, commitment becomes faulty. We stop praying, we don't go to church, we fall out of fellowship, and we curse God. We resort to all but what we know is right. Do we really understand what commitment means if it is quickly abandoned by, because of how we feel or due to the slightest inconvenience we might face? Is this what commitment truly is about? Sisters and brothers, Jesus was human. He came to earth and experienced his own emotions, feelings, and inconveniences. Yet his commitment never wavered. There is a parallel reality for some where there are times we do commit, but somewhere along the way we completely allow ourselves to fall out of touch with God. I encourage you to recommit and go back to where things started because the truth is God never left. We always do. But God is waiting for your return and he says to come home. I implore you, do not take advantage of God's open arms. It is either you are committed or you're not. Even if your timelines don't come through, you don't get what you want, you don't feel like it, you wake up sad today or you lost your job, you lost everything, commit yourself to the Lord and choose to do so regardless. Choose to commit in spite of, choose to stay with Jesus, just like he has done for us over and over and over again. A life without commitment to God is said to be empty and deceptive. Remember, my commitment points to who I am and who I serve.